The Edix Studio Portal's Entity List feature allows you to display records in a number of different formats. If your entity contains address information, you can choose to display it using pinpoints on a map. In this video, we'll discuss the mapping features built into Edix Studio Portals, configure the Entity List map options, and demonstrate the user experience. So here in my CRM, you'll see that I have a Entity List record called Facility Finder. So it's displaying a list of facilities. Now, facility is a custom entity um, that basically represents a location, an address. On the right-hand side of my screen, you'll see my portal, where I have a list of three records being displayed um, in the standard entity list uh, output format. So perhaps I would like to take this and display it as a map view instead. Over here on my entity list record, you'll see that I already have the name, entity name, facility, and my view selected. So all I need to do is to scroll down to the map view section, and I will enable map view by clicking uh, this checkbox using some parameters that have already been pre-configured. So I'll make sure that my record has been saved. And I will refresh my portal. So now you can see that those three records that were being displayed as a simple list previously are now being rendered as push pins on my map. Additionally, on the side of the screen here, you can also see record details um, being listed out as well. Now let's take a closer look at the map view configuration options. So in order to enable map view for an entity list, you must ensure that your entity field mappings have been correctly assigned. First off, the entity that you are mapping will have a longitude field and a latitude field, which you will specify in these two fields here, latitude field name and longitude field name. This tells the entity list where to draw the longitude and latitude values in order to actually do the mapping of the pushpins. Secondly, when I mouse over a pushpin on the map, as you can see here, the title that's appearing on the info box just beside the pushpin, as well as the info box details below, are supplied via the info box title field name and info box description field name attributes that are selected. Uh, so if I want a meaningful info box, I need to fill those in as well. Next, I need to supply the Bing Maps credentials in order for the map to function. So you'll notice that I've supplied the Bing Maps credentials here. Also, a default center latitude and uh, longitude should be supplied. Uh, otherwise, the map will start off in the middle of the ocean. So I want to supply a meaningful uh, center for my map. Default values are supplied out of the box for default zoom, info box offset, and pin image height and width. You can customize these values, however, if you so choose. Finally, you may also supply a custom image for your push pin in case you don't like uh, the out of the box push pin image. So you just do that by specifying a pin image URL here in this field. And finally, you can customize your search option, including your distance units, miles or kilometers, as well as specify a custom set of distance values for the search. With our options configured, let's switch to the portal and explore the user experience. So first, let's talk about search. We have the capability to search for specific records within proximity of a physical address. So I'm just going to type in a American address here into the search bar. And you'll notice that I have a proximity of two miles selected. So when I click search, it's going to find records within two miles of the address that I've searched for. So I'll click search. And you'll see here that I have a push pin that's been added to the map corresponding to the address that I searched for. And then it's displaying records in order of their proximity to that address. Additionally, if I'm on a device which is location sensitive, I can utilize my GPS coordinates 
by clicking this Get Directions button here, and that will produce a Bing Maps uh, directions interface, leading me from my current location to the location of the record that I've selected. Now you've seen how to use Entity List map views for geographic record displays. For more on Entity Lists, visit our Learning Center at community.adxstudio.com.